Hello, it's me, Agora. Welcome. This is part three of the Don Post Masks. <sighs> this is a beauty. <sighs> this is the one that happened to Lon Chaney Jr. in around 1940, Universal's The Wolf Man. There he is, ladies and gentlemen. Gentlemen, this is the Don Post Wolfman mask. As you can see, it's not doing really well. This was the first one that I bought back in the 70s. So it is a bit corroded. I bought the hands too. I bought the Wolfman from Don Post in the back of Famous Monsters of Filmland Magazine through Captain Company. I got the hands too. The hands, unfortunately, have completely rotted away. They've completely deteriorated. I had to throw them away. What was left of them that I had to throw away in little pieces? It was like a pile of dust with a little bit of fur on top. But I used to have this beauty in my little agoro room when I was a little agoro. I had a six foot four statue that my father had built. And it had arms and a head and I put this on the head and I put these hands on the hands. And the cool thing is one of these uh, hands was loose. It would go like this. If you tap the back of it, so I'd have friends over. And then I'd get behind it and I'd tap it. And they'd be like, <laughs> scared the poop out of them. It was so cool. But unfortunately, time passes and things get deteriorated. But this is the Don Post Wolfman mask. I'll show some of the detail. You can see they did an excellent job gluing it. As usual, they get a little sparse in the back. You know, it depends on the mask. Some of these were glued better than others, but they were all hand glued. I say that a lot, but that's the thing they don't do anymore. Ooh, look at that little, little dust on top. <laughs> but this was a beauty. This was the first one I ordered. I was hoping to see Lon Chaney Jr.'s Wolfman head in a box. So I also touched up the teeth. I painted them with a little stronger uh, paint because the paint was a little faint because these teeth are hand painted and painted right in there. And yeah, as you can see, there's some damage up in here. So it's a, uh, a really, really was a really nice sculpt and hair applied mask. It also has the ears, the little pointy ears. It's so cool. I really like, I've seen some uh, refabricated Don Post studio masks. And I really like the mask from Abbott Costello, 1948 meets, Abbott Costello meets Frankenstein, that Wolfman mask. That's one of the Wolfman styles that Lon Chaney Jr. Uh, wore that I found particularly appealing. I really liked the look of that Wolfman. I would love to get that mask. I liked how the detail, the hair came more up into the face in here, which even in the original Wolfman it did too. But of course, on post, they started it right here. They didn't bring it in a little bit, uh, a little further in. Um, and also, like I said before, these masks, the different years, just like cars, they came out with different models. This came out the same year as Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, and their hair quality is exactly the same. So there it is. <laughs> so lovely. Phantom of the Opera, Lon Chaney Sr. Way back in 1925. This one, as you can see, Walker Jog. What happened to it? Looks like somebody poof punched it. I didn't punch it. I swear I didn't. I don't know what happened to it. Like I said before, I put these away and stole it to get a little phantom hair in my mouth. I put these away a long time ago, but you can see this one really got deteriorated and they seem to implode. They fold inward and this one he really does have some old ugliness now. This one I actually bought at Don Post Studios. At the studio in Glendale, California. I was a little out, And I walked through the hall again. I've told this story before. I even saw Don Post in his office. He jucka, he jucka, he jucka. He just hung up on the phone. He didn't jucka. And I saw him and I was like, ah, I panicked. But I didn't say hi to him, but I wanted to. He looked really friendly like he would have easily said hi. But they took me on a quick tour. I saw Godzilla hanging in the rafters where they mold things. Saw a bunch of ladies smoking cigarettes, drinking coffee, gluing the hair on. They take the hair and they glue it on with like a fork or a knife, I mean, and they put it on and they let it dry. I watched them for a while. 
And uh, this one was hand glued too. And as you can see, gazauza, something's happened to the glue. You can see the brown spots. That's the glue coming through, I believe. I don't know what it is, to be honest. <laughs> it's happening there too. This mask was, uh, again, hand painted. They really replicated Eric's teeth perfectly, just like in the film. Um, the hair's a different color, it's gray. I think he, the Phantom's hair was actually black. Of course, it's black and white film, but it works. It works for this. Again, very strange, the coloring there. And again, just badly damaged. Can't take them off of their styrofoam heads because they're so brittle. This one is really just sadly falling apart. As a matter of fact, a chunk fell off as I was taking it out of my cupboard to bring it down to show you. So this one, again, is really not in great shape. But this is a, a 70s phantom mask. I love it. Um, yeah, that's about it for this one. I don't know why he has such a funny nose. I know that Lon Chaney actually put hooks in his nose that went back and attached to his wig. And he also put some kind of wire, uh, like a round spectacle in his eye to make his eyes bulge, which if it went the wrong way, could have cut his eyeball. So the guy was a little nuts. But he sacrificed his art for the terror of the Phantom of the Opera. My last mask is Timberwolf. Now this one is interesting because at one point Don Post decided to just do some masks that weren't from films. Timberwolf is not from a film, at least not what I've seen. Although the Wolfman is very familiar looking. This one, they went really generous with the hair. Look at all the beautiful hair. This one has really got the hair. I, I was very like pleased uh, when I got this mask because it has so such fine hand glued hair work. I'm big on the hair work. You like my hair? I'm doing the three pointer now <laughs> on my head. Anyway, yeah. Now the glue you can see is kind of uh, yellowed a bit and it's starting to show up. It never looked this way when I first got the mask. I took some pictures from this years ago but I don't know if I will ever be able to find them again. But this, they did a really nice job painting the teeth and the tongue and the work is really nice. It's deteriorating, but not as badly, but still very brittle. Can't really take it off the mask holder, the styrofoam head. But this is the Timber Wolf. And this is an awesome wolf mask. So that's my second Wolfman mask from Don Post Studios. So I'll see you soon for my next episode of the Gore Short. Ooh, <laughs>